Hi, my name is Dave Ray, and I'm known as the beauty surgeon. And uh, I've been in this industry for approximately 30 years. That's kind of dating myself, but 30 years I've started this industry as a young man. Uh, I was very sort of excited about this in the early years. Don't want to say which years. Uh, I had an aunt who um, was a hairstylist and I was just fascinated by the responses that I saw people gave after getting you know a hair service and so I thought hmm that's like something that I would like to do at the time I didn't even know that males were you know a part of a uh, hairdressing world or the cosmetology world I just was excited about seeing how people responded to getting a great style and so I thought maybe I can do this and so my mom uh, sort of encouraged my aunt to have me be her assistant. And um, I started with her as an assistant, shampooing and sweeping the floor and you know, picking the hair up off the floor and all that stuff until I was able to really learn to style hair and then I just took off from there. Um, as a matter of fact, that aunt, she no longer does hair. And for some reason, she, um, we got in touch with each other years later. She was not aware that I was still in the field and so she it brought tears to her eyes when somebody recommended her to me to get her hair done, not even realize they recommended her to her own nephew. So that's just like fascinating. However, we're not here to talk about that now. At least we got a little bits about how I started in this industry. I, um, I'm known in this industry as a master hair colorist, uh, the king of weave or interlock weave, and the guru of fantasy hair competitions and so I compete a lot I have been winning competitions for the last I would say 15 to 16 years and um, I've grown from strength to strength as it relates to um, hair competitions I've actually graduated from uh, fantasy competition to what is called artistic hair competition artistic competitions a little bit more um, intense in terms of the training you know, it's a lot more structured, it's what the other people do. And um, we do competitions across the world. There is a, a board in uh, Germany that runs the artistic hair competitions and they have them worldwide. There's something called Hair World or the Hair Olympics that happens every two years in different parts of the world. It could be Russia, Germany, uh, Moscow, uh, China, Japan. America gets it sometimes, and so we travel to different parts of the world. I happen to be a part of a team called the Black Trophy Styling Team, and we compete using black models um, in these competitions, because generally it's Caucasian or Asian models, and so we have sort of broken the trend and decided to take some black models. We have won competitions in China, in um, Italy, in Paris, and in Germany and um, looking forward to the next competition. The group of us, we have a, we are headed by a team, uh, a team of five of us headed by a gentleman in Chicago called Mr. Thomas Hayden. I have been so great at what I do that I've been asked over the years to become a judge and I was trained to judge competitions and so it's something that I really am excited about. Um, I am known as a judge that is um, very technical, as they call me a technical judge. Um, others may say I'm very critical because I um, make sure that the, the uh, contestants or the competitors understand that it's not, this is not a game. This is a, it's an expensive hobby and work has to be done to really you know, accomplish this, uh, this goal as it relates to fantasy competitions. And so I believe in giving very constructive criticisms. I don't believe in spoon feeding people. I believe in letting them know the truth. And so when I speak to a contestant, if he or she cannot handle what I have to say, then that is really that uh, person's loss. And so I try my very best not to um, lie to people. I don't want to make an impression. I want them to understand that it takes work, it takes planning, and if you're not good at it, you should get training. And so fantasy competitions, a lot of times I have seen lots of, you know, creative energies, but just not well executed. A lot of times people decide, oh, I want to enter a competition without any sense of direction, 
without even finding out what the judges are re required, what the judges are requiring them to bring to the table. And so they come to the table, I would say, very unprepared. And um, I try to tell stylists when you're entering here competitions, you, it's not a, you're not in a salon, so you don't want to do stuff that you see in a salon every day. It has to be over the top, and it has to be a conversational piece. But it also has to look like it's, I would say, growing out of the client's head or the model's hair. It should look like I just, you know, had an idea and I just plump it on her head. It should look like you designed it so that it was, it would look like it was growing out of her head form. Okay? It was a part of her, like it's nicely sculpted. And so that's why a lot of times I see people, you know, don't win competitions, um, at least in my book. One has to be clean, you know, partings must be clean. I don't want to see any gels, um, wet gel showing, um, hairpins should not be showing. I'm very, very, very um, personal like that. So I, people get very, something very antsy when they're around me. Or when certain people see me coming to judge, they go, oh gosh, I can't win this competition. But I always tell my um, competitors, you know, don't be scared of me. Just listen to what I have to say after you have lost. Even sometimes when you win. Sometimes you win because you're better of all the evils there, not because you're great. And I, I, I don't believe in being unfair. I don't believe in uh, giving people scores because I like them. Even if my sister or my brother or my mother or my cousins were entering here competitions, as a matter of fact, my sister is now in cosmetology and she wants to compete and she, I already told her if ever she's competing she lives in Florida by the way I'm in New York this is New York actually this is New, this is what New York look like looks like so um, I've told her if ever I have to judge her in a competition just know I'm gonna be very fair I'm not gonna pretend like I even know her and she says trust me Dave I know you very well so that's understood, I think. So um, I'm just going to finish applying this product to this client here. Um, she got some color. Um, I did what is called a, um, I broke her base, giving her like a copper blonde tone. And I'm going to add some highlights to her. So after breaking the base, it came up to a copper blonde. We're going to put some lighter blonde in it. This is um, a high lift with um, 30 volume. And she has no other chemicals in her hair. She doesn't wear a relaxer. So we don't have to worry about, um, you know, hair being compromised. I do her hair all the time. Um, cut her hair in several different styles. She has been a model for me many ways. So... She kind of knows, and leaves it up to me to make my decision as to how we move forward with her here. So after this, I'm going to talk to you some more about hair competitions. I just want to finish this, complete the process so she can be, you know, processing while we are talking. Okay. This is my last panel. And we do, I do this all day. And color, relaxers, and um, weaves, getting ready for competition. So you see I did like a, a windmill, if you want to call it that, on her. Maybe I can put one more panel in here. Uh, I'll just put one more panel. Some of this you can edit out because you don't want to put all this. I'm just talking. Hmm? So now I've completed her. So she's going to be processed for maybe another 15 minutes or so. I'm going to watch it. And so I'm taking off my gloves. And there you have it. Yes, so, you know, as I was saying earlier, all the competitions I've won, I have received awards, whether they are... Uh, I guess they are, um, you know, trophies or, you know, whatever. So these are some of my trophies that are here in the salon. 
I have a lot more at home, but you know, there's just not enough space for me to carry all these things here. So, um, you know, and I work with other people. This is my salon. However, I work with other people, and you don't want to intimidate other people because they're not competitors and seeing all these trophies and not, you know, too exciting for them. You know, it kind of takes the spotlight off them. So I try to balance it. I try to be a little modest, if you know what I mean. So this is just some of the trophies I've won. This is the first place trophy I won maybe in the 90s. And, you know, as you go down the line, you see all the different awards from all the different, um, these are all awards here. This I won in Paris. Um, on my flight back, the two handles broke. It should have been like a handle here and a handle here. And I broke something in the flight, in the airline. They were searching me through um, the airport, and so it got busted, but that's okay. Um, I still won the award. You know, I got like second place, actually. And this is the first time that America is placing in Paris in the Mondial Coiffure Artistic Competition. Um, I got second place for um, the evening look. Um, evening updo, and, and when they announced my name, we were all sitting in the in the stands. And when they say Dave Ray of New York, I you know, kind of did they call my did they call me like wow? So anyway, everybody was like yeah, they're calling you. So I ran down and picked up my trophy, and it was all except my little cup, and it was all exciting. And um, you know now I don't do as much com competitions. I do a lot more training. I train people for competitions, and um, I just find. Um, you know, this is my way of sharing what I've, what I've learned over the years in terms of competing. Um, I had people who um, I emulated and just grew from there. Um, you know, my, obviously my first and second competitions, I didn't do too well. I got like fifth place and third place. And then I just started to look for what the judges were looking for. I started to see what made that person win. And from that, I decided, okay, I'm going to do what the judges like and not what I like. And so sometimes, even if when you have an inspiration, you have to kind of go with what the judges like. You can't always go with what you want because you're trying to win. So it's not about you. And that's one of the things I, I've learned. Um, like I say, I'm very, very technical. I'm very critical, but I'm very constructive. When I, when I try to share with um, people who uh, compete and they say, why didn't I win? You know, after the show, they say, why didn't, you win? Why didn't I win? Well, you know, yeah, I'm very critical about how I, you know, compete or how I judge. You know, when I speak to someone who was a competitor or is a competitor and I've judged them and they may, they may not have won, you know, people always wanted to know, well, why didn't I win? And I'm very honest with them. I say, you didn't win because, first of all, when I saw your style, I didn't go, mm. I, it didn't give me a aha moment. You know, and I always try to tell people, when you're competing, you know, the judges have to be able to look on stage and see, you know, three people or four people that really give them the aha moment. And if I don't get that from you, your style is not great. I don't care how great you think it is. Um, it may have to do with not only the style, but maybe the color you chose. You know, you may have a black girl with black hair. That's just not for competition. You got to get a black girl with hair that's colored. Maybe some blondes and some reds and some browns to really make the style stand out from a distance. So these are some things I try to share with people. Uh, fantasy uh, or, you know, over-the-top hairstyles, uh, you have to, you have to sort of make sure the styles you're creating was not uh, done before by anyone because sometimes you may have an idea and you may say, wow, you think it's really a, a revolution, but you find out that style was done a hundred times already. So do your research. Um, don't duplicate stuff. You know, do stuff that is really creative get some um, ideas from people uh, and I'm switching topics I'm talking about a lot of things in 2006 um, the New York State Board of Cosmetology chose me as the Cosmetologist of the Year and they gave me this little plaque and so this is my plaque to say I you know I'm hairdresser of the year cosmetologist of the year and I was kinda excited when I received it um, because from what I'm hearing, there's never been a male who has won it before. And I was given that award because they thought I was one of the only persons here in New York who was, you know, in my youth, who has been advocating and really sharing my knowledge with fellow stylists or fellow competitors or just hairdressers on the whole. You know, I worked for L'Oreal for many years as an educator on hair color and cutting and styling and all that. 
and um, I've written books and so I have two books that are published one is mind your business which is a book on how to run a business whether it's a salon or a small business how to really run it legally and um, you know professionally and really to make it lucrative uh, I've also written a book on hair it's called what is good hair and really um, you know, you have to get the book to really know what it's all about. It's really a book explaining everything about here, dispelling myths and, you know, empowering the consumer and educating the hairstylist. So it's really a really all-around book for everybody. Um, so I've kind of moved on to that. I've been trained by some great people. I've been trained by Vidal Sassoon in California and London. Also Jingles, um, Pivot Point. Um, went to Wilfred Beauty Academy in New York. Um, did here in the islands, did here in France, uh, lived in France for like eight months, but I'm from the islands, as you can hear my accent, I'm from Antigua, I'm not from Jamaica, get that straight, I'm from Antigua, okay, so that's another island, it's like close to, uh, it's close to St. Thomas, Virgin Islands, like in between St. Martin, so those are places you probably will know, so that's where I'm from, um, I've lived here, my parents have lived here for a hundred years, whatever that means. My grandmother, I was raised with my grandmother, who, um, you know, reared me in the islands. And then I came here when I was like a teenager, like 17, went to college, you know, did business management and psychology and didn't really want to be a, a, a work in the corporate world. I was a school teacher for like three years. I taught high school. I taught French and English. Uh, my English is a little bit okay. I taught English and I also helped out in chemistry. Um, and that was not fulfilling enough for me. It was an all-girls school, you know, being a male, teaching at an all-girls school. It was a high school. I was young. And so I had to sort of catch myself before I wrecked myself. You know what I'm saying? So I decided that I didn't want to do this anymore. Uh, one, it wasn't that rewarding. They didn't pay that much. And then I may get in trouble. You know how that goes. So I went into the field that I really, really like. I've been doing it as a kid, which was cosmetology. And so here I am. I've decided to make this my career, and I'm, I have not regretted it. I've been able to travel the world because of the things I've chosen to do, um, as opposed to just standing behind the chair and styling here. I've decided to compete. I've decided to educate. I've decided to, you know, grow my knowledge. And so this has given me the possibilities of being able to travel the world. And I, I haven't stopped traveling, and I haven't stopped learning, and I haven't stopped sharing. And anything I can do to, you know, share my knowledge, I'm willing to do so. Um, doing hair of um, some celebrity I've done, um, to name a few. Uh, I don't want to call too many names because, you know, that's a whole nother story. But Phyllis Hyman was the first person I did. Phyllis Hyman, you know, she passed away some years ago. She committed some suicide or something like that. But she was a famous singer, jazz singer, Phyllis Hyman. Um, I did Whitney Houston's here one time, just a shampoo in the islands. She used to have a villa in Antigua, so she used to come by in the 80s, and I did her hair once. Um, well, I did her weave, if you want to call it hair. Um, I worked with Salt and Pepper before. I worked with um, Chrisette Michelle, which is a more recent person. Um, uh, who else? Um, um, yeah, you know, I've done quite some celebrity here. That's not really my forte because I really prefer being an entrepreneur. But I've done some celebrities like Rihanna. And before Rihanna was Rihanna, I was Rihanna. Um, Whitney Houston. You got uh, Salt and Pepper. You got Mary J. Blige. Um, and I can go on and on. And going back, you Erda Kitt. You know, the late Erda Kitt. I was her stylist just before she passed. Um, Phyllis Hyman. Um, and I can go on and on. Um, I somehow, I'm not crazy about doing celebrity hair. Um, one, because it's not a steady income. Um, I, I also must tell you that I'm very, very close with Johnny Wright. We actually used to work together. We've known each other. We are very, very close. Johnny Wright is a stylist to Michelle Obama. So, you know, he's coming out of my camp. So we are, you know, really... Um, uh, okay, where are we? And um, I'm very close friends. If, for those of you who have watched the... Um, Housewives of Atlanta. I'm very, very close to um, to Dwight Eubanks, who is the guy on there, Nene's friend. And um, as you see, my jewelry. He and I wear the same kind of jewelry because we kind of have the same jeweler. We're really close like that. 
And um, so those are the kind of people I hang He's actually a judge too. He judges with me sometimes. Um, he ain't as fabulous as I am when it comes to judging. He's just a judge because he's, you know, he's kind of a celebrity judge, but he ain't really a real judge. I'm a real judge. So just let, let you know that. Um, and let's see. Um, like I was saying earlier, I really don't care about doing celebrity here because it's not a steady income and you're taken away from your place of business, if you have a place of business, um, to go to shoot on location with them for sometimes weeks or months sometimes. Um, and so, you know, with me, I don't mind doing that once in a while, but to do it all the time is not, you know, you can't kind of have a steady income and you, you have responsibilities. And I really prefer the clients who are, you know, the regulars who come to me on a, you know, bi-monthly basis or bi-weekly basis or, um, you know, once a month or whatever you want to say, because you're sure of money in your pocket. And, um, and those are like your, your bread and butter. You know, uh, I find that like being a stylist for celebrities is better if you're a freelance hairdresser where you really don't have a location and you're kind of on call and you kind of go wherever they send you. So I don't really like that too much. It's okay. And then you have to deal with all the attitudes and the behaviors and the characters and all that. And I got my own character. I don't need too much drama other than mine. I should be the only drama king <laughs> in the building at the moment. So that's kind of where I am. Um, as you can see, as you can see, I have certificates and diplomas up the kazoo, like I have from everybody. And these are only some. I have some downstairs, some at home, uh, and I have some on the wall over there. We'll get to those later. We, we you know, I have lots of certificates, and you know, I have a PhD in trichology, uh, which is the study of hair, hair and scalp disorders. And so those are um, uh, some of my achievements, and um, I'm, I'm very excited about them. You know, they're behind me, but they still make me who I am today, and um, I'm excited about that. So. Hi, my name is Dave Ray, known as the Beauty Surgeon. And I'm going to tell you a bit Stop. Hi, my name is Dave Ray, known as the Beauty Surgeon. And let me tell you about what I do. When you're, when you're you know, getting ready for fantasy competitions, you know, it has to be something that you are pretty much doing all year round. So you have to stop making hair pieces, even if you don't have a competition coming up. You know, when you don't have anything to do, you got to get creative, sit down and start molding pieces and, you know, creating looks and all that. You have to get certain sort of uh, raw material so that you can really stop creating stuff. So this is some of the things that I create. And here I have like, this is pretty much like um, styrofoam. And I just wrap some hair around it and add some rhinestones and, you know, give it that sort of look. Same color of black hair, so... You know, if I'm doing something spacey, something from space or galactic, then I use something like this, okay? Then, you know, you buy pieces. You know, you buy like rhinestone pieces like this, you know, so you can sort of decorate the hair and make the hair pretty and shiny because this shines from a distance, you know, from a distance, this looks good. So, you know, you pick up pieces as you go along. And then I have pieces like this that I make, you know, balls. And I sort of wrap here around them and rhinestone them and just use them and, you know, for different types of uh, shows that I'm doing. Um, I do colorful ones, you know, colorful rhinestoning. And then you get the dress and the, all that stuff to, you know, just use different color here and just sort of create. These are pieces that are old, but I refurbish them and use them, you know, over and over. And, um, I mean, nobody can do it like me, so when I use it, you think it's something brand new. Then you buy like pieces like this from the store and then you kind of just rhinestone them yourself and sort of use them in your, in your hair accessorizing, if you want to call it that, okay? Even when I'm on stage, I have like really huge shares that I use for drama to get the audience attention and the judges' attention. You know, I got like my big shares to really show off what I'm doing. You know, on stage for some drama, if it's a competition that requires that drama, I get gloves and I decorate them, you know, to match hair pieces, even if I don't know what I'm gonna do yet, you know. This one I did when, I, when it was the Olympics, you know, silver, the Olympic logo, I sort of designed it myself, just straight, um, you know, strings, and I just sort of curved them into circles and made the Olympic sign. And you have to get like really great mannequins when you're sort of 
get mannequins and color them yourself and start practicing your hair pieces, your hairstyles. This is when you get like artistic, this is more artistic work. So you buy these mannequins, they're pretty much like $120, $150 each. They got shoulders, she got a nice face, she's pretty, huh? And I color them and sort of start working to create looks. So this is like your raw product that you work with. The stuff that I, but you have to sort of make it a, an investment, if that's a good word. Um, or it's an expensive hobby. You know, if you get up tomorrow and just decide you want to compete and you don't really have a lot of um, material to work with and a lot of ideas, you tend to be very sort of limited. So, you know, it's good if you keep doing it over and over and be prepared. So when a competition hits the floor, you're ready to go. Okay. And guys, as you know, I've published, for those of you who don't know already, but I've, uh, I've published two books. One is Mind Your Business, and it's already a bestseller. I've sold quite a number of hundreds of copies, about eight, 900 copies already. It just came out last year. And this is uh, sold at the trade shows on Amazon.com and BarnesandNoble.com and so forth. It's a really great, great book and um, really tells you how to run a business. And my new book is What is Good Hair? And it's really a lot of information about, you know, hair and scalp disorders and what's good textures and all that stuff. So it's a really informative book. And I have videos, you know, DVDs, like styling DVDs, you know, sculptures has like five styles. Even some of the color techniques that I use on these, color two, color one, and uh, interlocking weaving. I have a fabulous weaving, befores and afters. So these are some of the things that I've done. And this is some of my fantasy work you can see here. Well, this one is like real exotic. As you can see, the Olympic uh, rings. This is Lady Olympia. That's me. And really big. Um, Diamond Dazzling Diva, that's me winning first place in this competition. And this is just showing you Queen Latifah, some things that I've done in the past. All these are competition pieces. See? And we're going to get, you know, even crazier. These are all crazy things I've done in the past. See? These are all fantasy pieces. Um, Batwoman or Catwoman, whatever you want to call her. Okay? So, we got stuff, we got stuff, we got stuff, real stuff. See all this crazy, this is artistic work now, I was telling you about taking hair pieces and making them, you know, styling them on somebody's head in like 30 minutes, 40 minutes, right in front of all the judges. So this is stuff, this is artistic work. So this is mostly what I do now, it's a lot tech more technical. So, kind of just shows you some of the things that I've done. And, um, oh, this is an award I got for second place. Somewhere I was. I got second place award um, for a competition. Um, so you can see, like, some of the things. Uh, yeah, I got lots of stuff, but crazy, crazy, crazy stuff. Um, have lots more, and you'll be able to see that as time goes by. So, that's Dave Ray, the beauty surgeon. That's why they call me the beauty surgeon, because I'm an all rounder. I do everything, you know, years ago I used to do skincare and all that, have my own line of products, you know, um, for hair color and maintenance lines and uh, so I'm kind of well-rounded. So, you know, people say when they sit in my chair, they feel like they're going through surgery and when they're done, the surgery was successful. So that's why I'm the beauty surgeon. Now I've completed my model. Stop. Now I've completed my client for her lovely highlights. And I'm just sort of doing the finishing touches, doing some flat ironing, some ceramic ironing, just sort of smoothing the hair, soaking it out so the color can be vibrant. You should just smile, that'd be nice. Uh-huh. <laughs> so this is what we have here. You can see how beautiful her color is. It's gorgeous, I think it's gorgeous. Give a little bit of a mohawk in the back, just to sort of Blend it. Okay. So there we have the finished product. And we just sort of did a flip. You know, nothing too neat. 
and the color is like gorgeous. Look at that. See all the highlights in there? So copper blonde over a nice light blonde. I think it's hot. And she can style it different ways, but this is how I chose to start it tonight. Okay, done. So now, you have learned a little bit about Dave Ray and why they call me the beauty surgeon. You've seen some of my work, you've seen some of my medals, some of my trophies, and you've heard of some of the celebrities that I've touched. And um, also, you can probably see me in Chris Rock's documentary, Good Hair. I am the uh, chairman of the judges in that competition. So that tells you a little bit about me. I've judged for major competitions like The Proud Lady uh, in Chicago, Premier Orlando, uh, and also the Bronner Brothers year after year. So that's why they call me the beauty surgeon. It was a pleasure. See you soon. So, after all this, you've heard a lot about me. You've seen all my medals, all my trophies, all my awards. Even all my certificates and diplomas. And um, you've also heard about the celebrity here that I've touched. And you've seen some of my work on my clients. And... If you want to see some more of me, you can rent the movie Chris Rock's documentary, Good Hair. I am the head of the judges panel in that movie. I've judged for the Bronner Brothers for many years, judged for the Proud Lady Beauty Show, and also Premier Orlando. So, I am the judge of judges in this country. Creme de la creme, that's what they call me. Okay? I am the Simon, but a good one though. Just to let you know. So, see you soon.